Welcome. In this lecture, we are going to understand thyristor commutation techniques. Now, what is commutation? The word commutation means simply turning off SCR or thyristor. So, commutation circuit is exclusively used for switch off and SCR. Clear? Now your question will be what is the requirement of commutation circuit? We can turn on a thyristor or SCR by gate pulse or light triggering or temperature triggering. There are several procedures are available but if the SCR is turned on then it cannot switch off itself by its own that means gate can turn on SCR but can't turn off or other procedures that I have written here it can turn on SCR but it doesn't have the capability of turning off that's why the commutation circuit is so important clear now your question will be how a commutation circuit can turn off an SCR for that we need to understand the VI characteristics curve that I have discussed in previous lecture if you have not viewed it then and you can watch it to better understanding of this process so there I have discussed about the conduction mode and the forward blocking mode now to turn on SCR we need to increase SCR current to a certain value and that is called latching current now where is the position of this latching current in this characteristics curves it is almost at this point if I give the name of this point P then P is the point for latching current after this latching current the thyristor will be turned on now when you want to turn off the thyristor then you have to the value of SCR current below a certain value and that is called holding current now where is it this is the point of holding current I am giving it the name H so you have to reduce SCR current below the H point or holding current clear now your question will be how this particular circuit is reducing the thyristor current below the holding current this is a class B commutation circuits okay there are several type of circuits for commutation of thyristor uh, class A B C D E F all these are various types some one is called load commutation few are called force commutation sometimes class F is called line commutation so there is various reasons about everything okay so this is class B or force commutation force because the circuit itself does not turning off the SCR by its own we are forcefully reducing the thyristor current below the holding current that's why it's a force commutation now let us uh, discuss about circuit components T1 is the main thyristor or SCR which is to be turned off C is the capacitor L is an inductor TA is an auxiliary SCR or thyristor and D is a diode clear now first assume that thyristor is in on state that means a current is flowing through T1 during this time the capacitor is charged 
to the Vs value being positive and negative at this terminal because another current is passing through this path. So what is the flow path of the thyristor is Vs plus 2 T1 to load and again Vs minus this is the current path of the load current or name it as I T1 clear now let us name the name of the current passing through the capacitor as IC so what is the path of IC it's Vs plus to capacitor to inductor L to diode D to load and again Vs minus this is the path that's why it is charging the capacitor to a value of Vs when you want to turn off the thyristor then we need to turn on the auxiliary thyristor Ta when we are turning on Ta then capacitor C is getting a closed path that is C plus to Ta to L again C minus this is the closed path so the capacitor will start to discharge itself through this closed path whenever it is discharging the process continues until the capacitor charges itself to negative polarity of minus Vs. How? Because during the discharging, this inductor energy is also flowing and giving the additional energy to charge the capacitor to reverse polarity that is minus Vs. Whenever the capacitor has charged to minus Vs then this minus Vs will go through this path or capacitor will try to flow a current through this path the path is C plus 2L 2D 2T1 this is the path whenever a reverse current flowing that is IC through this path then this IC current is opposing this IT1 current or the main load current so IC is decreasing IT1 and reducing it down to below the holding current in this way it is turning off the thyristor T1 clear you have to understand these paths the flow of current path then it is not a difficult task to understand the commutation circuitry of a thyristor I have tried my best to express it in a simpler way that you can understand the entire procedure so let me summarize first a thyristor current that is T1 is passing then as the capacitor was previously charged due to IC when thyristor TA or auxiliary thyristor is turned on then the capacitor is negatively charged by discharging process and whenever it is negatively charged the reverse voltage that is minus Vs is opposing the main thyristor current IT1 and reducing it down below holding current now let us discuss about the waveforms first thyristor T1 is on so current is as usual flowing through thyristor T1 so we can draw a steady current that is IT1 is flowing until TA is on whatever I have discussed previously now those things are just will be reflected in the waveform so if IT1 is flowing previously then load current is also was flowing so we can draw load current up to T1 position now 
let me give the instance name as t1 this is t2 when t a is off t3 121 is off t4 and t5 okay then it will be easier to understand so next is ic what i have said i have said that ic is capacitor c is already charged previously to a voltage vc so if it is charged with a voltage vc and vc is equal to vs then when t1 is on then no current is flowing through this capacitor so the capacitor current will be zero up to t1 clear and when capacitor is charged to voltage vs then the polarity of this terminal of the capacitor will be this is plus and this is minus so voltage waveform will be like like this and this vc is equal to vs now when thyristor ta or the auxiliary thyristor is turned on then i have said that this vc is getting a closed path to discharge and the path is c plus to ta to l to c minus so during the discharge the capacitor current will flow in a reverse direction because during the discharge the capacitor was charged from positive to negative plate now the flow of current will be in reverse direction so the capacitor current will be going to in negative direction and then slowly it will charge the capacitor into minus vs voltage so whenever the capacitor again is charged to minus vs then the current will again go to the value zero so this will be the waveform structure of the capacitor current ic now what will be the current waveform of i0 and it1 when the capacitor is discharging through ta then it1 and i0 will be flowing as usual because t1 is on so it will not disturb the t1 current so i0 and t1 will be like this and your vc vc is negatively charged so the vc waveform will be like this this is minus vs now see at the diagram your capacitor is negatively charged that is this is positive and this is negative now when we are trying to turning off auxiliary thyristor ta or up to instant t2 clear now what will be the path of flowing ic current now ic will try to flow c plus to l to d to t1 then c minus or it will try to oppose the flow of it1 so as convention the value of ic will now try to increase like this until it is turning off t1 if t1 is going to be turned off by it1 current below the holding current as i have said earlier then the value of this it1 will go to zero and when it, when it is going to zero it is turning off the thyristor but one thing you have to understand that at this point your load current is still flowing through which path your i0 path is c plus to l to d to load to vs minus to vs plus to c minus this is the flow of i0 path that's why the i0 current is still on and eventually as capacitor is now providing the current so the voltage of the capacitor is now decreasing and going towards zero value and this load current will be flowing until the capacitor is completely discharged that is the value of this capacitor goes to zero then 
the value of this capacitor is again going to plus Vs because the source Vs is again charging the capacitor to plus Vs and, and making the terminal again opposite to what it was in T2 instant. Clear? So I0 is on up to T5 instant and IC will be equal to I0 as the capacitor was charging at that instant and the current IC was in series with the load because there was no any other current in terms of IT1 was flowing during T3 to T5. So I think the whole concept is clear to you. If you have any doubt regarding this then you can mention in the comment section below. Thank you.